Let's talk about the Watts murders. This one deeply affected me when it happened. It just, I don't know, it just really got me. I had a hard time sleeping for a while. I think it was just so horrific that it just really touched me kind of the way the John Bidet murder did. Um, right off the bat, I want to say, because you guys know I'm always watching TikTok, there is a guy on there that has come out saying that he was a guard over Prisoner Watts when he first went to jail. So he's doing this, of course, in many parts. So I don't know if you guys are interested. You might want to go take a look at his TikTok. I think right now he's up to part three and really hasn't said a whole lot. Maybe part four and five will get better. I don't know. Just put it out there in case anybody wants to go look at it. Also, um, Facebook's coming up with a Watts video on October 23rd at 9 p.m. I'll probably watch it, even though I probably shouldn't because it's probably going to tick me off. It's with um, Prisoner Watts family members. I guess this is videos of them talking to him in jail. I probably shouldn't watch it, but I probably will. So, interested in what you guys think? Are you going to watch it? Let me know down in the comments. Right off the bat, I want to say we all know Shanann is not a saint. Nobody, none of the people I know ever said she was. Nobody's a saint. Well, very few. Okay, I'm not a saint. I haven't lived a perfect life. Most of us haven't. Nobody is trying to make her out to be a saint. What we're all saying is she didn't do anything to deserve to be murdered, and neither did her children. I think there's a... I was reading today, a friend of hers posts on Web Sleuth, who I have mad respect for. I can't even imagine what this girl has gone through. But she was talking a couple days ago that Shanann made a lot of money with the Thrive MLM. I have to disagree. Here's why. If Shanann was really making seven to $80,000 a year and Chris was making sixty to 70000 a year, there's, they just wouldn't be in the financial straits they were in. Here's the thing. I've lived a lot of years. I've seen a lot of friends do MLMs, and I've seen it practically bankrupt people. Because here's the thing about an MLM. They will call it your sales. So let's say Shanann had $70,000 in sales. But did she really? Because here's how they do it. And this is what Lee LaRoe is in trouble for. You buy from them. And then you sell it to your people. But all they count as your sales is what you bought from them. I'm hoping this makes sense. If you've never been in an MLM. Okay, so... She, so, here's what, in my opinion, Shanann was doing, which is what many of these people do. They will max out their credit cards, buying the product, let's say it's Thrive. So, she buys 50 packs of patches. And then she, she has to prepay for those. They mail them to her, and then she's got to get those 50 packs sold. If she can't get them sold... That's just money sitting there. And this is what happens to a lot of them. They keep maxing out their credit cards to buy the product, thinking they will get it sold. And then they don't get it all sold. And then it becomes a vicious circle because then they got to have the other new thing that just came out. So they get out their credit card again and they buy some more. And here's the thing is many of these companies encourage them to do this they will tell them use your credit cards get a bank loan buy more if you buy more you'll sell more which is just not true so this is how a lot of people get themselves in trouble with an mlm and this is why it makes it seem like they're making money when a lot of them are not now she could have been making money off her upline and all that but here's the thing too I had a friend of mine a couple years ago selling an MLM, and I told her she was so excited because she sold, sold in quotes, because she bought. She sold enough product to make the free cruise. 
And I told her, I said, friend, listen to me. Go look at what that cruise costs. Now, remember, when they get these free cruises, they have to buy their own plane ticket to get to the cruise, okay? The company doesn't pay for that. All they give them is the actual cruise. So I told her, I said, go look at the price of that cruise. And I bet you money, you could have booked that trip for less than what you had to sell. She came back to me about an hour later and she was in tears. She was like, oh my gosh, you're right. I could have booked that trip for less than I had to sell. And that's how they get you. And these car allowances, it's all BS. It's all smoke and mirrors. Oh, I, you know, I'm not going to, that's about all I'm going to say about the MLM. I agree it caused problems, but here's the thing. Prisoner Watts was very sold on the Thrive thing. If you watch, even in his prison interviews, he's still promoting Thrive. He was just as much in it as she was. They were both in it. Now, I don't know what this these MLMs do to people, but it changes them. I got a friend right now on Facebook. I, she has changed so much since she started selling a makeup line. I'm like, who is this person? She's turned into this stranger I don't even know. So it does weird things to people. I want to move on to, here's another thing. We all know Shanann was a dominant woman. I'm a dominant woman. There's many of us out there. There are certain men that are attracted to a dominant woman. That's who they will always be with. So let's look at Prisoner Watts. He was trading one dominant woman for another, which was Nicole. His mother was a dominant woman. So there's the pattern. This type of man wants to be with a dominant woman. I've seen it over and over in my life. I'm sure you guys have. Now, I will say my husband's a little different in that he is never dominated by me. We're very equal, even though I'm a dominant woman. But we're very equal, and friend, my friends will even tell you that. But anyway, I do think when you look at family annihilators, financial strain is always a big part of it. So I do believe they were under a financial strain, and I do believe that was caused by the whole MLM. But they were equally responsible. They were, you know, they were both in it. There's no doubt they were both in it. So, here's the thing. I have said this on Web Sleuths. Prisoner Watts is a pathological liar. He will throw a little bit of truth in, and then it's all lies. So, it's very hard to piece out what was truth and what was a lie. It's very hard for any of us to believe what he says. I still don't believe what he says happened is the way it happened. I think there's a little bit of truth in his story and a lot of lies still. I don't think we'll ever know for sure what happened. Here's what I think, and this is just my opinion. I think the girls were already gone before Shanann got home. I think he had already murdered them and put them in their beds so that if she checked on them, they looked okay. Because think about it, if the lights were out and the kids are just looking like they're sleeping in bed, you're not going to think anything of it. I do think they had sex because when you look at Shanann's text, that was a big deal to her. She was really equating that with love, which is what a lot of people confuse, in my opinion, those two things. So his rejection of her for sex was really hurting her. So do I think they did? Yes, I do. But I think that then she went to sleep. And that's when he strangled her. I totally, I've always said she was asleep when he strangled her. And I, in my opinion, that's why she didn't have a chance to fight back. In my opinion, that's why there was makeup all over the pillow. I still don't even think the strangling took place the way he said it did. But I do think she was asleep when he did it. Here's my other thing. I have never agreed with AD on YouTube about the girls being walking to the truck. I have never, ever believed that. I have always believed they were already gone when Shanann got home. I'm not going to go into his shadows and all that BS. I just don't believe it. 
I don't believe Chris's story that the girls were awake in the car in the truck. I don't believe his story that he had to murder them twice. I don't know why he puts that in there, but again, he's a pathological liar. Their lies never have to make sense. They're just lies. If you look at his lies when he tell him when he's on the front porch, the blatant lies, you get what a liar this man is. So these lies don't have to make sense because people always say, well, that made him like look worse. So why would he do that? It doesn't matter to him. He doesn't think that far ahead. And this is what family annihilators are known for is not thinking ahead. They're only thinking in that moment. Now, did he premeditate it? Absolutely he did. I do believe him there. Here's what I think about that too. He was giving her when they were in, I think North Carolina, visiting her family. He was giving her the oxycodone to try to cause a miscarriage. I, part of me thinks had she miscarried, he would not have done what he did. I think then he would have left her and divorced her. I think in his mind, there couldn't be a divorce if she was pregnant. Because that was going to make him look so bad to other people. And that's all he cared about was what other people thought of him. That was huge to him. So I think he knew this was this divorce was going to look so much worse if he had a girlfriend and a pregnant wife. He knew that was not going to bode well for him. So I think had it worked and it had caused a miscarriage, this may not have happened, but I don't, you know, I don't know for sure. It's just something I feel like my gut feeling. But, you know, it's hindsight. It doesn't really matter now. But he for sure premeditated it when you look at him giving her the oxycodone and the other things that he did. There's no doubt this was premeditated. And that's why I feel like the girls were already gone when Shanann got home. I do think it messed up his plan when her plane was late. I think he started freaking out because things, you know, now it was getting too late or too early in the morning, whichever way you want to look at it. So now he was kind of freaking out and getting paranoid because he had already done away with the girls. See, that's the whole thing. When he had already done away with the girls and the plane was late, his plans were going to get really messed up. So what if Shanann didn't show up at all that night? What if her plane kept getting delayed? So you see what I'm saying? That's the kind of freak out I think he was having. I think he was totally freaking out that maybe she wasn't coming home at all that night. And then what was he going to do? Because he had already done away with the girls. So that's what I feel about that. The last part of this I want to talk about is the girlfriend, Nicole. So many people have so many conspiracy theories out there about her. I think you're all giving her way too much credit. I, th I think she absolutely knew about Shanann. I mean, obviously she did. I do think she had Googled her and searched her like most girlfriends do. Do I think she knew? No, I don't. Do I think she was part of the plan? No, I don't. Do I think AD's ridiculous videos that she was there that night? No, I don't. I don't think, I think she did a lot of things wrong and despicable, but I don't think she was part of this plan. I don't think she knew he was going to murder anybody. I don't, people are still saying whether she's in the witness protection program or not. I don't know. I think she's going to have a hard life living this down. I do think it initially she thought she was going to make money off this and be famous and instead she's infamous. So there's that word again, infamous. So I don't know how she's ever going to, she's probably going to have to change her name and start her life over. But I feel strongly that she didn't have anything to do with the plan. I really don't. And I think, in my opinion, if the police had thought that, they would have gone after her. Because this whole thing was so horrific and the police were so affected by this. I don't think there's a chance in hell they would have let her off if they thought she had had something to do with it, I think they would have gone after her till they proved it. So that's just my thoughts. So I'm going to end this here. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments. 
Let me know what you think about uh, the Facebook thing coming up. Are you guys going to watch? Maybe we'll do a live afterwards and we can all talk about it. Let me know what you think. Have a great day.